Hey guys, welcome back to a new video in which we'll be building a bot navigation bar item in Jetpack Compose with news and also budgets. So let's check the other way studio. This is how it looks like. We have, of course, items with this little five that says something is new in notifications that you have new notifications or in profile, this one that says you have something important in your profile. Following all the material design guidelines and let's get started. Okay, here we are on Android Studio. The first thing I did is actually created this list of the items. So it's a bottom nav item because eventually each one of these is an item. So it's a data class that has a title, a route. So for example, when you click on this one, you want to navigate to a screen using the route of that screen. The selected icon, for example, here, when it's selected, as you can see how the icon looks like, but when it's selected, it's a different icon. It's an outlined icon when it's not selected and a field icon when it's selected, as you can see. Of course, this is selected icon and selected icon has news, just this little red dot that tells us something is new there, so we need to check it. Budgets, of course, this number of budgets that we have in here. For example, if you have new, new notifications, five new notifications, then you can show it like this. And of course, when you click on it, you'll then need to implement some logic to remove this one because that's it, you, you already clicked on it. And I created the items list. So I have four items. Profile is the title here. The route is profiled, but in lowercase, of course, in a real app, you're not going to use the route like this. You'll have a dedicated class for screen routes. And here, of course, the icon, when it's not selected, we are using the field icon. Otherwise, the outlined icon has news in profile is true. So we do show that. And here, we can actually see this one to false here for notifications. Budgets are five, so we show a budge. And of course, the rest is just the same. We have titles and routes. We created the list. And right here, the first thing we need is a scaffold to create this one. So scaffold. With a scaffold, we get the place in which we can put different things. For example, a bottom bar, which is exactly what we need. So our entire bottom bar is going to be inside here. We also get a place to put, for example, a floating action button uh, that's going to be somewhere right here. We get a place to put our top bar, which is going to be the top here. Okay, so using just this scaffold, we get different things. We can actually check that as well. We also have snack bar. So it gives us places in which we can put those. In our case, we are interested in, in fact, let's skip this floating action button so you can see what I'm talking about. Floating action button. I'm not going to have anything inside it. Just going to be a floating action button. Okay, and I don't need this top bar. So inside my button bar, what I need to create is a navigation bar. That's what I need. Inside my navigation bar, I get a row scope. So all of these will be inside a row. If you don't know what a row is, you can go in this playlist and watch the video in which I explained rows and boxes and comments. So each item will be this one and all of these in a row. So for that, I need all the items. And I'm just going to actually iterate through the list. So bottom nav items dot for each in index. And here I get the index and its item. So index and bottom nav item like this we can actually bring this right here a little bit so we can see in order to create is a navigation bar item so navigation bar item for each item in this item as you can see i get three different things which are is selected or not so which one is selected and uh, as we click that selected changes okay we also get the on click what we want to do in the on click normally we want to navigate to that screen we can just write something like if we have a nav controller i don't have anyone dot navigate to my bottom item dot route so i can navigate there and i'll keep this i'll just come here out because i don't currently have any item let me just format this like this and then come here out the icon is going to be the icon that is displayed if it's selected, it's filled. If it's unselected, it's outlined. That's the difference. But now let's start with the selected. So when we click on an item, it should be selected. And then how do we make it selected? For that, we need a state that changes. And I also created a video about states. So you can go in this place and watch the states video. So var may be selected something like this by remember, import, remember, and then that's going to be mutable int state of zero. So by default, the first one is selected. And now how do we know which one is selected? By checking if our index is equal to our selected here. 
So like this, we don't need these brackets. Index is equal to selected because this selected is at the end of Boolean. So if our index is equal to this state, then that's exactly the selected one. Now, how do we actually change the selected one when we click? Because when we click, we do change the selected one by just updating our state. So selected is equal to my index. Now I change the one that is selected. And here I have the icon. The icon, as I said, depends in whether I'm selected or not, or the item is selected or not. But I also have these badges, as you can see. We have badges in these icons. So I need to actually set this icon in a way that it can accept those badges. For that, what I need to do is using a badge box like this. All I need to do is pass in the badge. So if my bottom nav item dot badges is not equal to zero. So I do have budgets Then I'm going to show them by writing budge is a text that is just my bottom nav item dot budgets dot to string because we want a string at the end. Else, so right here, else if my bottom nav item dot has news, then I'm just going to show a budge but without any text like this. We want to add some experimental annotation first, and I need to surround this with brackets like this. Then I just need to create the content block to remove uh, the error. So what I have in here is that I check if I have budgets. So if my items have budgets, and to do that, I check if it's not zero, then I show the budgets like this in add text. Okay, else if I have news, which is this one. So if I don't have budgets, but else if I have news, then I show that little red dot, okay? Otherwise, then I don't do anything. So if I don't have budgets and I don't have news, I don't do anything. I only show my icon right here. So icon, I'm going to use image vector. And the icon, again, depends whether my item is selected or not. So if index dot is equal to selected. So if this is the selected item, then, of course, I'm going to use my bottom. I'm going to, to a new line, probably, bottom nav item dot selected icon. Else, if it's not selected, then I'm going to use the unselected icon, bottom nav items dot unselected icon. For the content description, can be bottom nav item dot title, and we then need a label, which is this text right here. So we can just go somewhere right here and just make sure I'm outside the icon. I'm going to use a label that is the text, and that's simply a text that just says bottom nav item dot title, and that's it. We have an error in here because of padding values. To remove that, we either need to use that padding values. For example, what's going on here is that this takes a space, I don't know how much, like 70 dp. The content inside our scaffold needs to be pushed from the bottom by 70 dp. So that 70 dp exists in this padding value. Uh, now, I don't need that, so I'm just going to put it in a variable to remove that uh, error. So padding is going to be it. So the error is gone we can now try running the app and also we see this floating action button okay as you can see let me just make this a little bit big here is my button bar here's the floating action button as i said i just told you that in scaffold i can get the place in which i can put things if i didn't have this button bar then this uh, floating action button wouldn't be here it would be somewhere around here now i actually don't need that we need now to rerun the app to see that button bar so this is how it looks like. We can always change these, for example, posts in here or categories or whatever this is. I can put like 20 in that and then run the app again so I can see. As you can see now I have 20 in there. And of course, when you click on one of them, you need to implement some logic to remove this one because that's it, they already saw that. And uh, yeah, that's up to you, that's up to your app. I'm just showing you how to use a bottom navigation bar that follows the material design guidelines widget but compose like this and of course when you click you need to navigate to that uh, item screen or something like that using an nav controller with the route and uh, this is it for this video which is another jetpack compose playlist video if you like what i'm doing support me by subscribing liking the video so now see you in the next video and bye